So in this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at how we can start introducing some routines to help build contextual understanding in mathematics. And this really comes down to improving students' literacy skills, being able to understand what's going on inside of problems, and then be able to apply what they have learned. And so I don't know if you've ever had this problem before. If students have rushed into a problem, they start plugging numbers in, and they are they're doing whatever they're doing just to get an answer, maybe based on what you were doing at that time. Or students are hesitant to even start into a problem because maybe they're a little overwhelmed by the amount of text that they're presented with. And so if this is one of those situations that you've ever had, then we're gonna take a look at what we can do to help improve that. So here's a quick question that uh, I like to start with. And, it's, there are 125 sheep and five dogs in a flock. How old is the shepherd? And I don't know what your first uh, response is to this, but for myself, I would think this doesn't really make any sense because I'm reading into this question. I'm thinking about what those numbers mean, but that's not always the case for our students. And so here's some sample work from what some students may have done. And believe it or not, if you gave students this problem, they would probably try and attack it in a very similar way, depending on what they've been doing in the moment in your class. So I'm not necessarily saying that you should try this with your students, but let's think about now, what is the context? What is going on in that problem? What should students be doing? Well, they should be saying that that doesn't really make any sense, okay? so. Let's think about now some routines that we get our students to be thinking about the problems and instead of rushing into them to give us some answers, let's give the, let's take a little bit of time to actually, you know, solve the problem and figure out what's going on. So we're going to be building context through what's called numberless word problems. And what's beautiful about numberless word problems is they allow us to teach through story. They also allow for all students to take part in the conversations that we're having within our classes. And it provides opportunities to develop understanding of quantities. And so we have to, this is something that we do have to teach to our students. We have to teach them how to paraphrase. We have to teach them to share their thinking. And this is one of the routines that helps us do that. So in a numberless word problem, we're just going to be slowly revealing information in a problem. So in this problem here, it says some mosquitoes were buzzing around a pond, a frog caught some. So currently you'll notice that there are no values. There's no numerical values. All that we're doing is we're building an understanding about what's happening with these mosquitoes and a pond and a frog, what's happening. And maybe at this point, we can even start to have our students draw the scenario out. Now, we're going to go to the next part. We're gonna add something in. We wanna give students time to think about this and see what's different. And now we say, oh, now there's 10 mosquitoes that were buzzing around a pond and a frog caught some. Then we give them more information and now we can say, all right, let's take a look at this. We're getting our students maybe to pair together and or to think about things independently, getting them to pair with someone to think about what's changed and maybe what they would do to approach or what the question might be, okay? Because we haven't really asked a question yet, but we're just building context. And the last part of this now is adding at the end, how many mosquitoes did the frog catch? So we're going, and this might be the piece that we would normally start with. This whole, this whole question, 10 mosquitoes were buzzing around a pond, a frog caught some, there were seven mosquitoes buzzing around, how many mosquitoes did the frog catch? Well, what we really wanna do is if we are taking, we don't have to always do this. Remember, this is a, a routine that we want to help our students um, use to develop this contextual understanding to not be overwhelmed by the text and be able to pull information from what they are, what they're reading. So we can start with something like this and pair it back and start to slowly reveal the question to our students, adding more information in as we go. So a few teacher moves as you're working through this, really make sure you give students time to think. 
Allow them to draw it out. Give them time. Get them to draw a picture out. Get them into that habit of creating an image about what actually might be happening. Get them to take time to pair together and share their thinking and discuss words that represent quantity. And so that students are starting to understand that it doesn't always have to be add, subtract, uh, or put together or any of those things. Make sure that they're understanding that different words could represent quantity. So some of the resources where I got this numberless word problem from was from bstockus.wordpress.com. And we'll put this into the link in this video. And uh, another uh, routine that goes along right with this is called slow reveal graphs. It slowly reveals different parts of the graph for so students aren't looking at the whole thing at once, but looking at different parts of the graph as they are slowly revealed and trying to make more sense or make sense about what's going on. So thank you so much. And I hope that you're able to check some of these things out and try some out with your students.